All right. Well, it's it's nice to, to be back. Um, welcome, guys. I'm seeing some faces I've seen um, before. Hi, Jill. Welcome. <laughs> and um, to our online audience, uh, welcome. So today we're going to be talking about canning. Canning. And uh, it's my understanding that a lot of people do canning around here, right? Uh, and so you might be familiar with the process. Uh, it's okay. We can we can bounce off some ideas. We can share ideas. Uh, just before we jump into the actual practical, let's see if we can discuss sort of fundamentals. I mean, why do we can? You know, what is canning? And why do we do it? How can we do it safely? So canning is our preservation method, right? That's the whole purpose of canning. You want to preserve the food for a long time. Uh, how long do you think can the vegetables or can anything can last? So if, if you saw a, a, a can and that was like was done like two years ago, would you be comfortable eating it? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, so five years. I, I think this, that's the oldest one I've seen. I was working at the Bureau of Standards in, in Jamaica and we were going through some boxes and we found this can with green bananas. It was five years old. And so we opened it, <laughs> smelled good, looked good, no, I didn't taste it. <laughs> I wasn't sure whether or not I should, should do that. You know, over time, I think part of the, the, the concern was that there was a little bit of rust on the can. You want to watch for that. If there's rust, there might be micropores through the can. And so bacteria might have gotten, gotten in. Uh, so when we say canning, we're talking about bottling, right? So when you put stuff in a bottle, this is canning. <laughs> this is canning. Usually when you hear the word can, you think of tin, right? You think of, of metal. And traditionally, that, you know, that's, that's all it is. But it's both. So we can in bottles, we can in, in metal. Um, can products can last for a really long time. At least 18 months, you should be comfortable eating products that are that old. Five years, yeah, even that, right? And if I just, can't it, I would try it. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Uh, so when we're canning, we use high temperature. You know what I'm saying? We use this fancy looking device here, this is our canner, right? And we, we, we heat this up to a really high temperature. We're talking about up to 240 degrees Fahrenheit. That's really hot, right? Water boils at 212. So we're going above that, that temperature. And also pressure. So we're pressuring, not only applying high temperature, but also high pressure. We're talking about 50 PSI. Um, pounds per square inch, that is. 10, 15, not 50, did I say 50? 10, 15, 20. Now, the pressure that you use really depends on where you live. Depends on how far you are up, you know, about um, sea level. Where are we now? What's the elevation here? It's uh, uh, St. Mary's, about 800. Just about about 800 um, feet above, above sea level, and so the canning that we're going to do, we can we we can use 10. We're going to use 10 psi. Now, if you go up into the mountains, give me a high place. Give me a which which is there anywhere in Ohio that's really <laughs> elevated? Bell <Belt> Mountain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, Bell Mountain. Yeah, it's yes. the highest point. <laughs> that's the highest Ohio. point. You know really? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, compared to Jamaica, right, I'm from a, a region that is very um, mountainous. But the higher you go, though, the less the pressure is. The pressure drops as you as you go up. And so water tends to boil rather quickly. So water boils at, at, at all level, right, at sea level, water will boil at 212 degrees Fahrenheit or 100 degrees Celsius. That's normal. But when you go up into the mountains, water will boil even at 70 degrees C, right? It can, yeah. So 180 degrees, instead of 212, it boil at 200 or 180. So it's boiling faster. So you're getting a lower temperature. So to compensate for that, you need to apply more pressure. So you may need to add not 10 PSI, but you may need to go to 15 or 20, depending on how far, far up you, you are. Now, when we, a lot of people don't realize that when we can stuff, well, for those who are not familiar with canning, when you can stuff, you put everything in the can, you seal it, and you, you cook it, right? 
some people who are not familiar with canning, they think that, okay, you cook the product and you put it in the can and seal it. No, that's, you know that's not how we can, right? You put everything in a can, you seal it, and you, 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 you cook it. Um, so what's this device here? In, you know, I, I have not done a lot of home canning, but um, I used to work with the Bureau of Standards in Jamaica, and part of my responsibility was to inspect devices like these. Well, like these, right? We call them retorts. Um, they're basically very, you know, these oversized pressure cookers. They're two times my height. <laughs> But it's essentially a pressure cooker. I mean, they, the processor we're going to use today is similar to what they do and how, how they um, cook green beans in the food industry. As a matter of fact, about uh, two weeks ago, I was at um, Bentman and Gas. Have you heard of that company, Bentman and Gas? They're in St. St. Henry. It's the largest processor of green beans in the state of Ohio. Yeah. So I got to see, I mean, their cooker. Uh, it works the same like this, but it's a little bit different. But it's the size and length of this room. And theirs is not a still retort. The cans go in and the cans move, right? So there's a spiral that keeps the, the can uh, going. So within nine minutes, it's, it's done. Everything is done, right? Nine minutes. Comes in at one end and travels, comes out at the, the other end in nine minutes and the product is cooked. Now we're going to be cooking up to, take a look at your recipe. It's always important that you follow a recipe, right? Based on this recipe and where we are in terms of elevation, um, we have, what size cans are these? These are pint, right? Pint. So pint. So we're going to be cooking at how many minutes? We're going to go for 20, 20 minutes. At, this says 11 pounds. Uh, we're, going to, we're going to use 10. Right? So the range is between 0 to 2,000 feet. We're at 800 and something. So um, 10 is fine. So we're going to use 10. Now, some people, when they are canning, they will put the beans. I have a lot of beans here. Let me show my audience the beans. Wow, look at it. Thank you guys for doing this. <laughs> Excellent. So some recipes you will see that they add the raw beans to the, to the can, right? So that's the raw pat method. That can be done. Um, I like the hot fill method, right? So it's blanched, blanched first before putting in the can. Now what's the difference and why? Now for those of you who have done canning, what do you do? Do you put the raw beans in or do you blanch it first? Okay, you just put, you just put these in, right? Mm -hmm. yep. Let's put them in. All right. Now, what's your experience when you do that? Have you done that? Mm -hmm. So you haven't tried years and years ago. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you remember? I don't you remember know. how it went? I freeze my beans. <laughs> you freeze it. Yeah, and that's another preservation <laughs> method as, as well. You know, if you have enough freezing, if you have enough mm -hmm. um, space, you, you can do that. Uh, one of the challenges, though, with freezing is that if it's not done right, the product comes out soggy when it is thawed. Yeah. So how do they avoid that in the food industry? They freeze quickly. The faster you, you freeze, the, the better the texture is. Because what happens, you know, in your freezer at, at, at home, as the product freezes, the ice crystals, they grow. They get bigger and bigger and bigger and they burst the cells inside of here. And then, so when you thaw it, it it's just soggy, right? The texture is not, not great. So in the food industry, they freeze like in seconds, right? I mean, this can be frozen in two seconds. <laughs> and that prevents the ice crystals from, from growing. But you know, that works um, if you don't mind eating soggy beans. <laughs> or if you have a, a system to, to, to really freeze it, freeze it fast. If you have a good freezer, that, that, that helps. Just don't be opening the freezer every minute. Every minute you go in, you know, you, because that, that helps, that causes the, the crystals to, to grow bigger and bigger and bigger every time it, you have that freeze, thaw, freeze, thaw cycle. So yes, that's one method. Another method is drying. Have you tried that? I've tried that. Have you tried these? That? Um, so I've tried that. Uh, I think, what, what was I doing? I was making um, some cookies, yeah. I was making green bean cookies. And so I dry them and then convert it to a powder and then we use it to make 
uh, Cook is, uh, as a matter of fact, it was this, the project my students uh, uh, was doing. So they made waffles, was one. <laughs> it was good, it was good, it wasn't bad at all. I think they added around about 10% um, to the flow. But anyway, back, back to this. So, raw versus blanched. The challenge that you will have if you um, use raw is that you're going to end up having a lot of floating, right? So when you finish, when you when it is done, you're going to have a lot of space down here with water and everything floating on top. It doesn't look very very pretty, and that's because the the blanching process that we're going to do it removes air, right? It removes air, and, and so that prevents the, the material from being, from floating, from being buoyant, right? So that's what we're gonna do. All right, so we have this ready. How's the water? <laughs> Is the water ready yet? So we have our blanching water. What's the function of blanching? Blanching, you, can, you guys familiar with the term blanching, by the way? Blanching, so with blanching, you're applying either hot water or hot, or steam, hot water or steam. And the purpose is to remove air, remove gas, so you don't have that floating situation. Also, it helps to fix the, the, the color. If you don't blanch, then you're gonna lose some, some color. So, so that's another reason. It, it also helps to kill some bacteria and enzymes as well. So it's a, it's, it's, it is a really good thing to do. So, Water is still, you want to check that water for me? How is it going? Is it close? Okay. <laughs> I believe it's boiling. Oh, it's boiling. Okay. All right. Yeah, it's, it's boiling. Oh, it's boiling. All right. Good. But essentially what you're going to do is, you know, once it is blanched, you're going to fill this up. So by the way, this has to be clean, right? So these are already cleaned and snapped. So the sides have been uh, removed, the ends have been removed. So you're going to pack it and then pour the hot water in. How far up do you go, by the way? You go all the way up to the top, way up, overflow? Mm -hmm. now, why wouldn't you want to do that? Airspace for expansion. You need airspace for what? Expansion. For expansion, right. So you need, you need because if you, don't, if you don't leave that airspace, it's gonna burst. Yeah, it's gonna shatter. You need that. Um, because once you cover this thing, once it is sealed, there's gonna be a lot of pressure in there. So this is called a head space, and this is excellent, so you want to bring it up to the neck, right? So this is going to be enough uh, head space. Um, this head space here is going to give you a vacuum. Do you know, you know, when you seal, have you ever noticed that when you seal your container, um, it has almost the top is like sucking, right? There's a suction, right? You can actually test it by, with your thumb. If it is floppy, you know it's not good. Don't eat that, right? Um, so you should have that uh, suction. When you pour that hot water in, what's gonna happen is that the steam will rise and pull all the air from here, right? So there should be no <coughs> air inside of that space. That is what is gonna give you the vacuum, right? The removal of air. So you pour the steam in, steam comes up, oxygen is removed, and you get that vacuum. That vacuum will pull the, 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 the seal down, give you a, a firm rip. Okay, so I hear that that's ready. So shall we blanch? 